in here. Eventually, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to get a second monitor. We're going to be we're going to be set up. Hey, yeah, thank you very much. I'm I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty excited about everything. So then, when I come home from Thanksgiving or from Christmas, I'll have two monitors, and I'll be in good shape. So let's jump into our first match here. I'm just going to be excited to have like a good setup. Let's fix this up here. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to just stream like a whole bunch of new decks, which, you know, I've, I've voiced with some of my friends that I've, I've been a little frustrated with Modern recently, so I'm pretty pumped to be able to just do some new stuff, try some new things out. So, so that, that is what I am most excited for today, or in the coming future here. I'm going to keep this hand. We have a discard spell, a removal spell, three looks at a land to play our Tarmal Wife on two, so this is a pretty good hand. We'll just pass priority here. Let me lengthen this out here. I want to work on my layout a little bit. I don't really know. My layout's going to get easier once I get two sets of uh, two monitors, which is a part of the next goal there. So... Looks like I'm playing against Elves, which Elves is a Elves is kind of a rough matchup. I've found that it's pretty important um, to have like like Teamer Battle Rage is obviously very good in this matchup, but it's a, just an important card. So, and we got a good piece of interaction here. Like we're going to be able to play Tarmogoyf on to hopefully establish a clock. Goyf's going to be pretty big, so we're going to check out our top card to see if we want to keep it. We're going to keep anything. We're going to keep like a Death Shadow probably. Thought Seize. Thought Seize might be a little slow because I'm going to go Blood Crypt into Tarmogoyf. So I got one, two, three, four, five. So Tarmogoyf is going to be a five, six when it gets to attack. I don't think I need this Thought Seize. I think I would rather shuffle this away here. Go get an overgrown tomb. And hit this with a little with a fatal push. That could come back to bite me because I don't have a uh, I don't have another removal spell, but hopefully it slows them down enough. That's another redraw. Yeah, I was so excited for today that I just forgot to fix the stream decker. Put the ENT deck on. Elf creature. Okay, the metal sentinel. Is that it? That can't be it. Wow. That's good for the home team. Traverse. So, Traverse can turn into a Tarmogoyf next turn. Or turn into a Death Shadow next turn if we find like a fetch land. Because we can go like Inquisition, Traverse, play a Death Shadow. Alternatively, it'll be an, it'll be interesting to see if my opponent plays out into a position where like I can get a good I can get, I can do something productive with this Liliana. Which is really important I find in matchups like this where Liliana is not really good. So in game one, if you can play Liliana and have it do something, it's really important. I probably should have kept that in case I drew a fatal push. Collected company coming for them. So now we need like a thought seize. Land stubborn denial would be good. Okay, so we have a death shadow. I really need to, I want to draw a Thought Seize, because Thought Seize gives me Delirium and lets me go cast Death Shadow as well. <laughs> Makes Tarmogoyf big. So my opponent must just have mono collected companies. All right, that's unfortunate. So I can actually just go Inquisition, Traverse, play Death Shadow, but that seems worse than just playing another Tarmogoyf. 
So I think I just want to get aggressive, beat with this Tarmogoyf, and hopefully have get into a position where this Teamer Battle Rage can be pretty effective. Though, my opponent's playing the black version, so this means that like he can have Shaman of the Packs to make my Death Shadow large pretty quickly. So I messed this up. I think because my opponent can like company into Shaman of the Packs, I think it's actually would have been better for me to go Thought Seize, Traverse for a Fetch Land, play Death Shadow. It would have done one more damage to my opponent. So yeah, that was a mistake. That was just poor. And I think I think I'm going to just remedy that right now. Instead of just compounding the mistake. Yeah, see there's the shaman. So he's got West Lab W2. So that's delirium. Yeah, see I messed I just messed this up. So my opponent is gonna be able to play collected company next turn. So let's get this Verdant Catacombs. And if they get cute and wait, then we're going to be able to hit it with a um, with a stub if we get lucky. We do have three in our main deck. And we'll have four after sideboard. Oh, wow. Thank you very much for the sub there. I, can't, I do not remember which, which twin you are, but I appreciate your sub. Thank you very much. This guy right here is a part of the Canadian national wrestling team. So he is a bad man. There is a way my opponent just dies next turn. So I have a, I have a, just a, I have a national athlete subscribed to me on Twitch. This is unreal. There's the canopy. So my opponent's going to be at 14. If we draw a fetch land, are they gonna do this? They're gonna go for this main phase. Wonder Woman Hero, thank you very much for the cheers. Or B Day, B Day, B Day, B Day One. Is that what these are? Is it your birthday, Wonder Woman? It's kind of like my, I guess you could say the card holder birthday for me, but I guess when it starts, I don't really show up to birthday, but. But yeah, thank you very much for the for the bits. So an elvish visionary and a shaman in the pack. Oh yeah, I think my opponent's gonna die on this turn. This deals three to me, so this death shadow becomes six twelve. So I need to block like one of these, and then they can just take this. So I am gonna need something more. So I know their cards are Westville Abbey and one more card. If I draw a fetch land or a traverse, they're just dead. But I have to draw it. Okay. So what happens if I go block? So if I attack with both of these, I'm going to attack with both because... If they don't block one of them, they have to block both of them or they die. And then if they do block both of them, then I can just play Tarmogoyf and have Stub up. And then they're down two creatures. And there's not really any way they kill me into like Shaman of the Pack. Maybe even double Shaman of the Pack doesn't kill me because I'll be I'll have one and then I'll have another blocker to block this, the Tarmogoyf. So we're going to go in. Came here for the card harder stay because of the gameplay. Thank you very much, Wonder Woman Hero. So if my opponent doesn't block both of these, they're dead. Because if they, I'll just rage the one they block. All right, so we'll go here. And good night, Irene. They have like a slaughter pact maybe. That's the only thing they could have here, but we've got that covered. So we do 17. Come on, opponent. Come on, opponent. Just admit. Accept your death. My opponent's probably like mad they're dying to Teamer Battle Rage, which can happen. I, I've definitely gotten a little salty after getting Teamer Battle Raged out once or twice. All right. So what do we have coming? We got a Plute Delta. All right. So in this matchup, as I was speaking about, Liliana the Veil is not very good. 
Lily on the Last Hope's great. Kozlek's Return's great. Is it Static Caster's great? Collective Brutality's great. Collective Brutality's great. And the fourth stub. So, I have some cards to cut. I kind of want to cut some number of Inquisitions because I don't want to get flooded on these. And a lot of their cards that Inquisition hits don't really matter. They're just, they're very redundant. Um, I want to be able to use like two mana and, and I just want to get rid of, oh, what was I going to say? Um, this is just too redundant here. Like the, there's, the cards I'm taking with Inquisition aren't impactful enough. So I can make, I can see an argument about just boarding out all of my Inquisitions and just having thought seizes for discard spells, but I'm not sure exactly I want that. I could see cutting, like, I want to keep Abrupt Decay, I guess, to be able to hit um, their impactful three drops. So I think this is what I want to do. I've got, like, four Fatal Pushes, two Decays, and a Dismember, and then Brutalities for a removal. And we got a Sweeper and a Traversable Sweeper, basically. This card's so good in these matchups. This thing's just like a Planeswalker in play. It just mows things down. So 10 viewers this more 10 viewers tonight guys. This is my first on my on my pumped affiliated stream. I'm I'm excited. I'm having a good I'm just I don't know. I've had a great day. I've had a great day and this is making it all better. I hope each one of you have had days that are half as good as mine. Thank you for the follow Wonder Woman Hero. Also, I try to I mute my Twitch alert because needs more cryptic commands. One of these days, one of these days it's gonna happen. So, so this hand's great. I'm actually gonna fetch an island there. I cannot remember which which twin you are, but I'm gonna fetch an island. I feel so bad. This is a good hand here. We've got an answer on one, a brutality, and a threat. So this is actually a turn two death shadow. Well, not quite a turn. Yeah, it is a turn two job. Phil. Okay. I can never remember. I can never tell you guys apart. We'll have islands in here one day. Land of War Elves. You love death mana games? Do you mean Death Shadow? What do you what do you mean there? Daniel Swift. So let's go here. Thoughtseize. I think we're going to want Thoughtseize. That's going to be a good play next turn with Death Shadow. Swamp Mana. I'm kind of new. Okay. Well, we're going to hook both you guys up by getting Swamp Mana and by getting an island here with our the one and only Watery Grave. Get that. Pass the turn here. We draw another card. So we can play. There's a Traverse. And we've got Delirium. Which, so that if we draw another land, this can turn into an Is It Staticoster. It's an island. It has a type island in it. You know? It counts. It casts my blue spell, right? This is a combo right here. Okay. So I think I'm going to Thought Seize my opponent first. Actually, let's go here just to get some more information. All right, so we're definitely going to go get an Overgrown Tomb. Now, we're not going to look to take too much more damage because we're going down to 8 off of this. Which is going to make us big Death Shadows. So is Zuri Renegade Leader? So we can we can uh, collective brutality that next turn. So let's get rid of this collected company and then let's play this guy. And then if we, I guess even if we draw a land, we can't. So I might actually traverse for a land, like traverse for a blood crypt next turn, just to get some more mana going on for us. Because I definitely don't want my opponent getting this overrun going on here. 
Do you rip? Is it Azuri or do you rip company? No, there's the Azuri. Okay. So we'll brutality it. Probably not pitching anything because if he'd have drawn something that I could play after pitching to it. Okay, so that's a good draw. So traverse. So I can traverse for a death shadow and brutality this, but I cannot play my death shadow, which kind of sucks. Actually, no, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to brutality this and traverse for my static caster. Omaha. We're, we're changing the plan here. And then the static caster is just going to mow these things down here. Yeah, the static caster should just be like game over. Your opponent doesn't block. This is why sequencing is important. Doing this after after damage happens here. Because if my opponent would have seen the static caster, they definitely would have just blocked. So now the only thing we're really worried about is as long as one of their two draws isn't a whatever the thing is, um, isn't a, gosh, I can't think, a Elvis Archdroid, which this looks like it is. Yeah, so that's unfortunate. But the good news is, is that we're just putting enough pressure on with this Death Shadow, and we're going to be able to play this Death Shadow and have Stubborn, and play another one and have Stubborn Denial up next turn. Yeah, so I think I'm just attacking, playing another Death Shadow. Well, then if I attack, three, I take six exactly. So I can't attack. So I've just got to attack with one, or I can't attack. So I gotta go get another Death Shadow here, and then just hold up Stubborn Denial to be able to deal with any shenanigans. And then as long as my opponent doesn't have like a I don't know if they don't have a... Oh, thank you very much, Daniel Swift. Ahoy, what's the Card Hoarder Network? It is, uh, the CHN is the Card Hoarder Network. It's a new streaming thing that I have, was accepted to. It's a stream sponsor. So, thank you, Daniel Swift, for the follow and the bits. I appreciate all of those. Yeah, thank you guys very much. And now we can attack with both next turn, especially if we draw a fetch. If we draw a fetch land, then our opponent has to block. Yeah, thank you very much. So, it's going to be bad if this is a shaman of the pack. No, it's another Elvish Arch Druid. Block, block, takes six. So that does kill me. That does kill me if my opponent goes for it. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. We can play, we're going to play Eldrazi and Taxes in our next league. I just wanted to, I knew that people would be coming in and asking me about, you know, what this league is. So I wanted to play something that I knew to start so that I could hold a good conversation. And I want to wait for my friend that plays Eldrazi and Taxes whose deck I copied. He's going for it. Yeah, and he's got it. So block, block, he or she, block, block, take, yeah. Man, we were in very promising position in that game. Like I was I was pretty excited about it. Then it just turned out that we couldn't beat these two. I don't think I want to switch anything. I think I'm just gonna keep it. We're gonna be much better on the play. The mono white death and taxes deck. I don't really know anything about the death and taxes decks, to tell you the truth. Like, and it's kind of I do like them, and it's kind of why it's kind of why I want to play them. Uh, I think they're they're good. They're fair. Oh, Weather Wayfarer. So, Weather Wayfarer lets you tap um, for a mana. It lets you tap it and get a land if your opponent has more lands than you do, right? So, you can do it because you have to sacrifice Field of Ruin to use it, right? So, they sack Field of Ruin, the ability on the stack, you Weather Wayfarer, and then you get a land and another land from the... Field of Ruin, so like, oh, that's pretty cool. Let me check out exactly how this reads. Card, exclamation point, card, weathered, wayfarer. Oh, 
Oh, fairer. Weathered way or fairer. Oh, sh shoot. Card, weathered way fairer. There we go. So you have to do white and tap it, search like okay. So it did work how I thought it would. Oh, I thought it would. All right, so this is one of our best cards in the matchup. This gives us a redraw to it, and we can go Thought Season and Tarmal Wipe. So I think I think this is a pretty good hand. So we're gonna check out their top card to start. And then if we draw like another Thought Seize, well, I guess we have to draw a, like a fetch land. A street wraith or a thought seize. A fetch land and a street wraith or a thought seize to play out. Be able to play Death Shadow on two. <clears throat> yeah, this is pretty good. So he's got an Elvish Visionary on top, which I don't, I don't ever like seeing the card Elvish Visionary, to tell you the truth. So hopefully they've only got one piece of interaction. Then it'll send an Elvish Arch Druid, Elvish Arch Druid. Yeah, Liliana's not very good against his hand. <clears throat> it is a spreading season of elves. You are right there. So I don't really know what to take. I kind of just want to take this path so my Tarmorwaif can beat over the top. Tarmorwaif and Death Shadow can beat him. But I'm going to have to find answers to these. I know I've got his next draw covered. And at least Liliana can tick down and get this if I draw land for it. I think I'm going to take this path. I think I need to be able to establish a game plan here with Tarmac Wife. Yeah, I agree, Archmage. Just gonna stack. We drew a push, which is good. What's the best standard Planeswalker for white Planes decks? I want getting the trials, but everyone has it out of stock. Yeah, I don't know standard too, too well, but I would say the getting of the trials is where you want to be. One of my friends plays it in Modern in his blue-white control deck. All right. So now my opponent's going to go Forest Elvis Visionary. Elvis Visionary. If I get a fetch land, I'm tempted to like hold it and then go push an Arch Druid, untap, hit a Visionary with this ability because I just don't want to. Uh, I don't want to put myself like. I want to be able to get value out of this push by hitting into dealing with one of these arch druids. There are other planeswalkers. Are there other good planeswalkers? I did just assume their line of play. Okay, so again, I think I'm just going to do what I spoke about doing last turn because it means if I draw a land also let me play Death Shadow. So I think I'm just going to attack in here. Then I'm going to push an Arch Druid, push up on this vision, or tick up on this visionary, and then hope to be able to bash for more damage next turn. My Tarmogoyf is going to be much larger. It's going to be at least, it's only going to be two points larger. So it's not much larger. This definitely gets Watery Grave. A Johnny is better than the six drop. I don't even know the six drop Gideon. I know it was like a Planeswalker pack Gideon. My bonus fetch shocking. That's, that's for Magic Online, Daniel Swift. You might not get that in paper. So the question is, do I take a shot? So this makes it so five. This makes my Death Shadow so I can play five, five Death Shadows next turn if I draw a land. Oh, you want a moto? All right, so my opponent knows that math. So now we're going to get Watery Grave, and I'm going to push this.
So now I can play another Tarmogoyf and hold up Stub. The problem is if I hold up Stub and just play Tarmogoyf, then he can just play around that by playing Elvish Visionary, Elvish Archdruid. So, and he, he's got three unknown cards. They have to be land collected company to really punish me. So I think we're just going to start getting some value out of this Liliana. Because again, the longer this card's in play, the better it is for us. The problem is company would definitely wreck us, but like I think it's just much worse than if we've just played Tarmogoyf. I guess maybe playing Tarmogoyf was better. I do miss Splinter Twin. I think Splinter Twin was like a really healthy litmus test, litmus test for the format. Like you had in order to deal, in order to like you just had to answer a creature in an enchantment, you know? And I think that's fair. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Hot take, Blazing Shoal would not be good in modern in these days. So my opponent, Arc Druid's up. Right, we're casting El we're gonna cast the Arc Druid here. Yeah, I wish there was something I wish there was something to help keep the format a little I I wish that so Brendan DeCandio made a really good article. Wow. So I kinda wanna save this traverse. I actually actually I could traverse. I don't play the stomping ground anymore. So I could traverse for, I want to wait till I get into the land so that I can go traverse for the Staticaster, Staticaster this and tick up here. So I think for now, I'm just going to attack with this Tarmogoyf, play another Tarmogoyf and hold up um, Stubborn Denial and tick up probably on the... Nettle Sentinel to make it so this Arc Druid is the only really effective blocker or attacker. Yeah, I mean, so I actually, I, I like Brendan DeCandio's article on Star City Games that he did a little while ago about, uh, whatever it is, about Modern, when he just talked about how Modern's a little frustrating because there's not a best deck. There's no target, you know? So, like, sometimes you can have this really tuned modern deck. Like, I've got, like, I know exactly my top, my 60 cards. I got a sideboard that's super tight, that's just got everything you need in it. And then you just get to the tournament and you never play any of those matchups. And, like, that's pretty frustrating, I think. And I think that's where modern sort of is right now. So, how do we, like, win next turn? I'm pretty sure we probably did. So this is one, two, three. I don't think there's any way we die here. Like, I would be... I don't think it's, I think it's too, like, there's, a, it's too wide open, Kevin, in my opinion. So if my opponent plays, like, an Azuri, this is going to be pretty annoying. If my opponent plays Azuri, I could be in a lot of trouble here, where I need to draw, like, I don't know, Shaman of the Pack, okay? I always like, I don't know, I like more, I like when there's a litmus test, you know? So now we're in kind of like a bit of a team or battle rage moment right here. Unless my opponent's going to try a cord, they're going to try a cord here.
and we'll stub the cord. And then we need to draw a removal spell for like either the Nettle Sentinel, the Shaman of the pack. If we draw a land, then we get it too, because then we can go like, no, we can't even do that. If this is a cord, then uh, it leaves me for... That is nice about modern. You can do whatever you want. And that that is very cool. Like, I definitely like that as well. I don't like a deck that can go turn one Faithless Looting. But, like, also those turn one Faithless Looting decks, they are those Glorious Vengeance decks, they just lose to a Thought Seize. Like... So th th those decks I don't have the problem with. And if you like diversity, then that's modern. Modern is very diverse. And a lot of people like that. So now I need, like, removal spell or team or battle rage wins me the game. Now. And my opponent has to block both Tarmogoyfs. So, so that's a redraw. So let's draw. My opponent's got one card in their hand. So the problem is, if I go to four, then I go block, block, I minus on one of these. So I'm still not dead unless my opponent's got even a shaman in the pack doesn't kill me. So I guess I keep going here because my opponent has to block both goyfs. That still doesn't do it, right? It's five, six. Yeah, Blood Moon and Urza's Tower is just not very much fun. So now I just attack, attack, tick up on one of these, traverse for Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, don't play my land. My opponent double chumps. And then I hope my opponent doesn't, like, rip. I don't know. They would have to go, like, Azuri. Even Azuri doesn't do it because these Death Shadows are huge. And I definitely want a plus on, like, this Land of War Elves, I think, because it's the one that's most likely to attack. But in a broad scheme, open format, having top decks. Twin is kind of a special case. Yeah, I miss I miss Splinter Twin. I didn't even play Splinter Twin. I just like what it did for the format. So we're going to plus on this Land of War Elves as it's the one that's probably most likely to attack. That's another advantage where I was playing a version without Teamer Battle Rage in it. And I played Gore Clan Rampager in the board. And like Gore Clan Rampager would come into this matchup. And Gore Clan would be excellent. So we are, I guess we're not even dead. No, we're still dead to double double Shaman of the pack. My opponent can like company in to Shamans. So there's a Visionary. Honestly, most people that aren't very good prefer more variance-based formats. It makes it more likely they can just run away and whatever you doing. Okay. That makes sense, Kay. And it's not like they're not very good. It's like the, there's a different – like magic. some magic players just don't play a lot. and They want something that they can just put on the shelf and then come back and play with. You know, like I liked – for there was a while when I was in college, I didn't play standard. I played modern because standard was just too much to handle. So as it goes right now, my opponent's chumping away their board. And even if they have a path here, okay. So that's a bit annoying. We don't have a basic, okay. So we're still blocking here. 
or blocking something. My opponent's out of cards. Right as he stands, I guess my opponent doesn't have to block away this as this Elvis Arch Druid, but they do have to jump away their entire three of their creatures, and we plus so they're going to have zero power in play after this. And we're definitely going to wait to plus on this Liliana. I would assume he blocks with all of these here. So now we go push here. Opponent chumps away the board. Is it better to push? Push, then I guarantee you get this Arc Druid off the field. Legacy has a lot of a lot of heart. Actually, no, I can go revolt, push this, tick up, kill one of these, kill my opponent. No, you're right. It just you no, you're 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 right. I I was just coming to it a second late. As long as my opponent, I don't even know what they could do here. They could like go into an abrupt. They could like. Oh, uh, now, now they can't, I guess. No, you were right. It just took me a second to get there. Don't even do anything. Boom, boom, boom. All right, good start to the night here. Opponent says GG's. No, they could go. Oh, the canopy's tapped. The canopy's tapped. Never mind. These are little things you miss while you stream. Like I assume, I just assumed this canopy was open. Anyways, I'm gonna grab some water while this goes on. Feel free to sub and toss me, toss me all of your hard-earned money for my, for my awesome achievements here. Just kidding. Just kidding. So Phil, I actually don't like that's a you're you're right there, Archmage. I actually don't like the Grixis Shadow Deck. I keep trying it because like it should work. Like I love playing Bug Delver and Legacy. And uh this is a mulligan. And you would think that like Grixis Shadow sort of is the Delver Mirror card. Oh wow. Like I don't think I can mulligan this. <laughs> Scry anything that's not a land at the bottom. The modern twin. We definitely could. Like, I'm pretty lukewarm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good deck. Alright. Alright, so we drew a land. Step one. Now we need to draw another land so that I can play triple death shadow on two. This is what we're going for. So, like, what I don't like about the Grixis deck, and the Grixis deck's very good, like, don't get me wrong, you know, what I don't like about it, what is it, Shadow, Aven Mind Sensor? Oh, shoot. That can't be real. So we're going to get a green land first. I did not play around this. Come on, there we go. Get wrecked. But um, what I don't like about the Grixis deck is that... Yeah, God, I've, I've had some bad times with Rune Halo. All right, Night of the Reliquary. That is one of my favorite magic cards. 
And then we're going to be able to play some Death Shadows here, which is sweet. Yeah, I think we just Death Shadow it up here. Sometimes I feel like, yeah, tell me about it. Better lucky than good, Kevin. Sometimes I feel like the Rangers should lower this deck. What do you mean should lower this deck? What do you, Vend SS? <sighs> My opponent's probably so mad at themselves. Like, man, I just, I just made them like. Let's hope they don't do that. All right, they have a voice of resurgence. They're probably going to. If they wait till they untap, it's like not an intelligent move by them because it lets me like push something. So what do I do? Because now if I inquisition them, there's not really like much I can do here. I kind of want to inquisition them, see what they're doing. Because this is at least going to make it so I can attack with my Tarmogoyf. They could have been wanting to go, they could have like a path and want to Ghost Quarter themselves. Okay. And if they path something, I get to push this, which is sweet. God, I do not like the future site borders. I am not a fan. So yeah, like this knight is just dead as a doorknob. This thing's just gonna take over the game if I let it. And it's unfortunate, but I've gotta I've gotta kill this knight. So we just hope we didn't find it. Double company. Okay. So now I'm free to attack with this Tarmogoyf. And then push this and hold back the team with my uh, with my death shadow. And if they attack, the death shadow just gets larger. It's slow for this deck. Um, it is slow. Like there's no there's no other way around it. Surprise! My opponent did not attack. Did not block with their voice. Like it is slow, there's, you know. There's definitely, there's definitely, you know, nothing. Like you're right there, but I think it's just really important. I should have, again, I should have pushed there before damage to get another point in with my time of life. We were just talking, the little things, the little things that aren't so little. So my opponent can't do anything with this, which is sweet. I would like a fetch land. That's gonna be pretty good. So now I can attack with both of these. My opponent's got double company, so we're just gonna kind of hope my opponent never actually finds one of those companies. And I think that's because I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna dismember this noble hierarch. Yeah, I think I'm definitely just gonna dismember this noble hierarch here. We're just gonna like tell my opponent they're never cast in this collected company. Get him for six. Yeah, I agree. So now we play another one of these. My opponent rips Path to Exile. We're dead. But, like, if my opponent doesn't rip Path to Exile, then they have to block at least two of my creatures next turn. And two of those being 6-6s. Six and I get to play a Tarma Wife. So, yeah, next turn we're just auto turning them sideways. Looks like my opponent drew a path. Another Ghost Courting themselves. Oh, they're going to play another... Oh, they're going to play Voice. Okay. This seems bold. I have, I don't know exactly what they should have done. I didn't, like, analyze it that much. Okay, so if we go attack, attack, they probably just block here and here. Which means they get a voice token. So they've got two three threes. 
They'll have, probably have two three threes, and we'll have a four five back. So there's no point attacking with this Tarmogoyf. Besides the fact that it makes my other Tarmogoyf lethal next turn. So, let's think. So if I just swing out with the team, he probably goes block, block. Okay. Makes, takes four. But then I'm dead to the three threes. Yeah, so there's no, so I have to just attack with two Death Shadows. And he chumps both of them. Then I go block, three, three, block, three, three, two gets through in the air. Right, this is what we're doing here. Bing, bing. All right, combat math. Just swinging two shots. Yeah, we got there. We got there. It took us a hot minute. Let's play. Let's play one of our homeboys here. And again, it's impossible for my opponent to draw Path to Exile and Basic Planes in the same draw step. So yeah, we got it. Go team. Go team. So I find this matchup to be really awkward to sideboard against. Like I know I want this, and I know I want this, but I don't really know what else I want. There are times when I like I want the collective brutalities. There are times when I want the stubborn denials. There are times when I want the Rangers, and there's times when I want the Lilianos. So like because, like, the stu hitting stub on his... Because he's only got, like... He can't win if he doesn't kill my creatures. No, we're on we're on done for right now there, sir. But, like... So, I, I know that I definitely don't want Liliana's. Like, I don't want Veils. I don't think I want four stubs. And I don't think that I want Ranger because it's going to destabilize my mana base. So... Yes, Ranger does seem awkward. The only thing that Ranger does that's really nice is it just puts them in a position where they have to chump block. You know, like puts them in the abyss. Oh, so Grixis is like a very, like what problem with Grixis is you have to play like 10 cantrips in it and Street Wraith, which means it's very like you're keeping hands that you just don't really know what you're doing. Like your hand might, you might keep a hand that's like two lands, Thought Seize, Street Wraith, Thought Scour, Serum Visions, and then you just don't know. I don't think I want Lingering Souls if I don't want Ranger VS, because, like, he can just beat around this card, and I can't hold off the ground. I tend to think I probably don't want this Liliana Last Hope on the draw. No, man. We, we wrecked. We wrecked, Kev. Did we get crushed? What is What kind of person are you? Who gave you a sword? Who like who 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 gave you a sword? This is bull. Yeah, dude, beats by shadow. I don't. I think I, I don't think I want all three stubs because if I can stub a company, then he's like just dead. And I think I probably can get. I actually no. I think I'd rather have stub than Inquisition, especially when I'm bringing in these brutalities. So I think this is what we're gonna do here. Hey, thanks, Kev. What traverse list are we playing after this? A person who has no faith in you, obviously. <laughs> so I want to play a traverse in the future. I want to play a traverse Abzan list. The problem is I only have like a certain amount. I didn't even think about whether it was... I saw one land in a Mishra's Bob and I was like, I'm going to keep. But the problem with... Uh, what was I going to say? With my situation here is I only have a certain amount of credit that I can pull out at a time. All right, let's see what our top card is. If we like it, we'll fetch and kill that bird in our upkeep. I think we like that. Do we? Do we? That kills Knight of the Reliquary. I think we. I think we want it. So now we'll go upkeep. We'll get our card, and then we'll go get. Overgrown tomb, and we'll smoke this bird. Uh, we will actually play mono. You taking turns now. The Carter sponsors us. We shall need to free ourselves from the pleb of Death Shadow. If I ever play a mono blue taking turns deck on my stream, I hope somebody just stops me. All right, let's let's take a look. 
Path, lots of ghost quarters. So I think I might as well just dismember this voice right now because I I'm probably going to have to dismember it with how this hand looks. And I really don't want to have to take an extra two points of damage from this. So I'm going to get a blood crypt because now if my opponent, like, if my opponent goes two drop on their turn um, and then waits, god damn it. If my opponent goes like two drop on their turn and then waits to kill me here, then I can, uh, and they go to like ghost quarter me on my turn, then I can close Lex return these away. Courser, Courser is a bad draw for us. That is bad for the home team. We need like a lot of help at the moment. So I can traverse for a death shadow. And then hopefully my opponent forgets how ghost quarter works. And then next turn I can go inquisition, take the, uh, and then take his, whatever it is, inquisition this thing and then play my own death shadow to kind of hope to keep up a little bit. The problem, like, the islands are good, but I just I just think, for my play style, the deck's too clunky for me. All right, my opponent saw the line here. Good for them. They remembered how Ghost Quarter worked. Don't do it. Don't do it again. God, what a strip mine, dude. So is my opponent going to crack me for four now? Yep. So they have Path Wolf Run. God, we are good at this game. So this probably still... We only have... we've Now, how we built this deck, we only have one red source. Which is pretty sad. So we're going to get Overgrown Tomb. We're going to play Death Shadow, and I don't really know what our game plan is here, to tell you the truth. Elspeth, Sun's Champion, and a Ghost Quarter deck. That just does not seem great. And my opponent's just like, whatever, dude, we don't need to activate this thing. Alright, so you're saying there's a chance. See what my top card is. It's a Verdant Catacombs. We will wait. Elspeth and the in the whatever it is, the Verdant in the Ghost Quarter deck is just not it just does not seem like a combo. That seems like an anti synergy play. 20 viewers, guys. Thanks, Sean. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here with me. Archmage, King Athreos, Daniel Swift, all you guys. Thanks for the follows. All right, opponents, opponents got me. Yeah, thanks for 20 people being here. This is my first Card Hoarder Network affiliated stream. I'm pretty hyped about it. So I appreciate everyone being here and being, being in on the good times. So on the play, I want me some, some last hope action. And I think that's it. Maybe I just don't even want these stubs on the play. Maybe I'd rather just like be lower to the ground and have discard spells. Maybe like one more veil. Yeah, I can buy that for a dollar. Yeah, I appreciate everybody for being here today, man. I'm really excited about all this. So we have two of our better cards. I mean, Team of Battle Rage is going to win us the game, but I don't think we can keep this hand. Here, I just I need a I need a threat, so we're gonna ship this one. This hand's like we're gonna keep this because we're halfway delirium, but we're gonna hope there's a spell on top. There's not. At least we're gonna be able to get our mana base all set here. 
Dharma Wave, it's a good card. We're probably not going to fetch aggressively with our first fetch land because we're going to be able to like take it easy going out, going throughout. So this is probably going to be a tap land here. Bird is the word from our opponent. They do have a red land for their Kessig Wolf run as a combo deck. So let's go get Overgrown Tomb. Yeah, our mana, our mana situation's good. We just need to, like, if we can turn on these Death Shadows, we'll be in good shape. Or turn on these Traverses for Death Shadows. So let's get... I'm not gonna... I don't want to show my Blood Crypt yet, because I might need that for, like, Team or Battle Rage. So I might sandbag this Polluted Delta until it's Team or Battle Rage time. And I'll just have to, like, play around that. You know, there's not really much else to it. Oh, wow. God, if we just draw even my... Or is it Static Caster? I was going to be so sad. So let's look at my top card. My top card is a Street Wraith, which gets us closer to Delirium. So we're actually just going to keep that there. And we're going to attack with this. Um, probably not, Archmage. Um, probably not because I only have, like, I, I work, I've been working a lot lately, and it's hard for me to get time set up. So I probably will continue to stream two days a week. But if you follow me on Twitter, I, because I'm, like, in consulting, there are some days where, like, on, I'll work all of my hours in four days, and I'll have the fifth day off, and if my wife's not home, then I'll stream. Oh man, why you gotta path my Tarmogoyf? I guess it doesn't even matter searching for the stub here, so let's get at least our lands are gonna be set up here. God. So now we're actually in a position where I'm going to just traverse and then I'm going to Traverse again to fill the graveyard up. So let's just... I'm going to get Delirium no matter what on this turn. Alright, good. So let's check this out. Alright, we're going to get rid of this Eternal Witness. Because I guess I should have gotten rid of... I wasn't thinking there. I should have gotten rid of Scavenging Ooze. So let's Traverse. Or Staticaster. And Boom! Just hi ya. Get out of here. I should have taken the scavenging ooze. I wasn't even thinking. Because like if my opponent plays the scavenging ooze this turn, it's kind of annoying. Which they're going to do. So this is kind of annoying. My opponent could go like runner runner with lands. And then be in business here. So there's the scoose. They have double... Double Courser Knight in their hand. Now they... I guess I should cycle this. Alright, that fetch land is not dead. So I'm going to take their Knight. Traverse for a big old Death Shadow. Hold this land. Hey, thank you very much, Roslyn. Hopefully our opponent understands they should have won game one. They might. So here comes a Courser. Okay. They have a Mind Sensor on top. That card does not have a lot of text. Okay. So let's check out my top card here. We have a land on top. So... We should go to attack here, and I'm going to fetch a tap land, because my opponent can force me to block this scavenging his next turn. So then should I attack? They have to sink their entire mana into this scavenging ooze, not play this courser, and then I just block. So I'm not dying next turn regardless. So I guess I should just get in here.
I'm going to play some type of traverse list. I don't exactly know exactly what it will be, but I, I will be playing some traverse. All right, we're flooding out. We could be in trouble this game. They also could top deck. Yes, you're right there. But a wolf run doesn't kill me, right? One, play it. One, two. Yeah, wolf run doesn't kill me. Wolf run only puts me to one. I definitely could have, like, played myself out of this game. Yeah, I definitely played myself out of this game getting too excited about, like, the is it Staticaster stuff. <coughs> Yeah, we got too we got too excited. We got too excited and too aggressive. But now they can't play. So if they if they just let this happen and I draw a removal spell, now they can't now a removal spell just wins me the game. Because they can't they're they have course of crew fix and um Whatever it is in their hand. And Avon Mind Sensor. And we did it. So that doesn't find anything. Yep. We push this. And then we attack them. I still I don't think my opponent's play was right there by doing it like that. I think they should have just passed with mana. On both sides. They should have just passed and done nothing. And then, like, you just chump the Death Shadow with the whatever it is, the dude. Like, we made a mistake there by being too aggressive, but they could have definitely played in such a way to be to be fine here. Alright, one of the play. I don't recognize my opponent's name. My hand is good. We're gonna have to bobble them. Because we have to fetch anyways, because we have the freaking breeding pool. This is the off fetch land. The non black land in the deck, you never want to draw. You only want to, you just want to find it when you need it. Besides that, you don't even, you want to just pretend it doesn't exist. Like, if I could just never draw, the, if I could, like, if I didn't have to play, if I didn't. If I could get away not playing, so what they do. Let me put the card on the bottom. If I get away not playing the off fetch land, I would. But I think you need it. Hey, thanks, Force of William. It's pretty awesome. It is pretty damn awesome, to tell you the truth. I am hyped. So check out my opponent's top card. The next setup is making it so like my computers. Oh, so we're playing against Boggles. Okay. Boggles no ley line and a Liliana in hand. That is that is what we that's what we like to see. Okay, so let's get rid of one of these blade cover scouts. The cartouche is gonna make things a little harder. So let's hope that we get some sort of value out of this. Like we might just have to put if he doesn't like suit up this cartouche, we might just have to like play this tarma wife and play defense. But man, I know I'm pretty I'm pretty hyped all the way around, to tell you the truth. I think we can get away cycling this. Okay, there's a death shadow. So death shadow is five power next turn guaranteed. Yeah, I think we want to do that. So this gets Overgrown Tomb. We Traverse for Death Shadow. We get ourselves our, a little 3-3 three, three going on. A cute little 3-3. Three, three. I've been playing against this deck more since it won a, uh, won a Moto PTQ. I think, did it win a Moto PTQ or the RPTQ? I know it did well in something. So, yeah, you guys, if you're interested in my content more, you should check out my YouTube page, which is linked below. It's free. Everyone knows how YouTube works. We're like, we're, most of us are all millennials. So, like, 
You should check that out, especially if you don't feel like subscribing, which is totally legit. Like, magic's expensive. That's fine. But if you want to help me out, you can check my YouTube page. So the cartouche is annoying because the cartouche makes this guy Liliana proof. All right, so I think what we're going to do here, we're going to lead off. So we know they have a Rancor in their hand. We're going to attack with this Death Shadow. And then we'll probably just play another Death Shadow and hold up this uh, Stubborn Denial here to see if he respects it. Or I could just not do anything, play around a Daybreak Coronet and have this Abrupt Decay here. Because as of right now, my, we have, my opponent's got seven power in play, so that's lethal. The Rancor. My opponent double blocks. We'll just take the trade here. And then we'll just traverse for another Death Shadow and play Death Shadow. I'm pretty sure no matter what, we're going to traverse and play Death Shadow here, unless my opponent chumps with the Warrior. Which they might do. I would not advise that play, but they could still do it. They shouldn't. They shouldn't block now. Like it's there's there's not enough. Their life total is not under that much like problems. They should just take the damage. The question is: Is do I traverse for a death shadow, or should I hold up abrupt decay? So. 6-7. My opponent's only doing 7 damage to me here. So I think I want to just hold Abrupt Decay. Because this right here is 5-6-7. So like Ethereal Armor would kill me or make me have to chump my Death Shadow. And then worse comes to worse, I can just Abrupt Decay this, untap and Liliana him. So I think we're just going to pass with mana. And then if my opponent attacks me for like chip shots me, I could just kill them. So we know they have Rancor X. Okay. All right, so they draw a card. Still seven damage. So if my opponent attacks, this is still going to work out the way I want it to. Because this is 6, it's 11. So I'll just decay this, attack, they block, and then I will Liliana them. So this is 6, 7... Right, am I losing my mind here? This is six, seven, I go to one. I guess I might as well just kill this now because, well, six is still lethal. 11, he has to block a core spirit answer. So I guess I should just make it so that my fetch lands are live. And then I'll just Liliana before combat. Just to make sure, like, my opponent might, like, be in a fog where they say, oh, I've got to keep this guy around. And if they sack this, not this, then, you know. All right, let's see what their top card is. Because they just sack this, they die. Not a creature. It's a path. That's sad. So I can't just go play another threat. I have to go, I have to get all of my opponent's threats off the board. So we go Edict, they Edict this, Chump Block, 
They then path me. I traverse for another Death Shadow. And then another two random cards. Yep, so Rancors come back to their hand. We attack. They jump. We pass. And then we just we can start working this. This Liliana more than likely is going to get at least one more Edict. There's a chance if my opponent paths on my main phase that I can go Traverse for Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, play Tarmogoyf also, which is pretty sweet. So my bonus hand is Path, two Randos, <coughs> and X. Path, two Rancors, and X. So hopefully we get something good out of here. <coughs> They're thinking about it. Not a creature. Not a creature. Even though this Tarmogoy's big, I don't want him to play a creature. They were, they were her. Oh, they play a bubble. So they put... A Rancor on the bubble. Then you've got to pass me right now. That's crazy. So I'll discard this. Attack. He'll path. He discards his um, Rancor. Attack. I'll traverse for another Death Shadow, play the Death Shadow. And then I can I can hold up the stub, but like he's gonna know it's up, so I'm gonna hold up the Blood Crypt so that I hopefully maybe can snipe like I don't know. A maybe like I guess I guess he's not playing around anything at this point. So let's go here, <laughs> Death Shadow. So I pretty much lose to like the protection from all creatures spells. Another cartouche is going to make this game harder, but I still think it's fine. He just needs to not draw the protection spell. No protection spell and we're in good shape. I think. I'm not super familiar with... He drew a dry arbor, which is annoying, but we do get to wrath his board. And then play a Tarn Wave. And another Death Shadow. And again, we'll cash this Liliana in just to keep our like we're gonna be able, we're gonna put 17 power on the board. There's gonna be 28 power on the board after this. So I'm just gonna try to keep everything as clear as possible from what our opponent's doing. Why no Lily? I, I guess it just didn't matter, right? Like I do Lily right now, no matter what I I end the uh I end the turn with he has no creatures in play. I discard his Rancor and I put all the power on the board. So I guess like because the sequencing didn't matter, it was going to end the same way no matter what. I didn't really think about it. Yeah, opponent doesn't have an out. Okay. All right, so in this matchup, I don't really have a lot of good stuff. I've got like this, and I've got this. And th this isn't even that good. So I basically just cut like a dismember and a fatal push, and then we just kind of run it back, and we hope that, and we just hope that our opponent doesn't ley line us into a uh, into a, like a functional hand. I'm gonna grab some water while I think about it. Like, I like to keep the Fatal Pushes in because it can help me get around Dryad Arbor and Core Spirit Dancer. The Kozlex return, like, sometimes grabs... Because sometimes what they do here is they mulligan to a hand that's got a Ley Line in it, but isn't that effective. And the Kozlex return can just kind of, like, catch them. 
And like most of my cards are pretty terrible. 23 viewers. I hope everyone's having a great time here. I hope everybody's enjoying my stream. I am super excited to be streaming today. It's my spot's first sponsorship stream, so you know, I'm on I'm on cloud nine. Cloud nine, like walking on sunshine. So this hand's all right. <laughs> it's not really great, but the thing is, is that Death Shadow can often make their turns like pretty awkward. Like they basically have to one shot me to get me. This Traverse feels like a dead card. I'm gonna need a Street Wraith or a Bobble to really turn this thing on, and like something else. I don't think I can Mulligan it because if he doesn't have a Ley Line, then he or she in this lay this hand's great. So. So maybe my opponent will mulligan like into a hand. I guess they so no lay line, so we're in good shape here. Which means my problem, my opponent probably has like a heater. I would assume that they would not keep a hand that doesn't have a ley line on six that's not at least serviceable. All right. I might be wrong. So we're going to fetch an overgrown tomb just to like thin our, like it's marginal, but we want to thin our deck out. We want to do the damage to us. I guess this is actually, I missed, looked at my lands, and this is not even a turn three Death Shadow the way it stands. So they like their top card. I don't think I care about this rest in peace. Because, like, I'm far away from this Traverse. This top card must be in the land. I could take Ethereal Armor. I guess I'm just going to take this Glade Cover Scout. And it appears my opponent's all in on this Rest in Peace. So then I'm going to take this Glade Cover Scout... And I'm going to take the Slippery Bubble next turn. They're playing like they're all in on the rest in peace. Which I don't think is right. I think he's better off just playing a dude down and then like hoping. I think we're just going to play this game like a Death Shadow game. We're not going to play a Tarmogoyf Traverse game. <clears throat> so there's Temple Garden. There's no land. No land. Nope. Why did he keep on top? All right, so this kind of changes our plan up here. Unflinching courage. I still think this ethereal armor is way scarier than this rancor. So I'm going to take this Ethereal Armor. Then we'll play this. My opponent probably cracks me for three here. I got a 14. Fetch Shock to 11. So my opponent ripped the land. So they go Fetch Shock. They're going to rest in peace. What are you doing here, opponent? Okay, they're going to rip me. They cracked me for one. Yeah, I can't imagine. So he kept on flinching courage on top with only one land. Which just sort of blows my mind. I need a stubborn denial here. A stubborn denial, and I feel like I've got this game locked up. Or like an abrupt decay. Obviously, like Liliana off the top is pretty much the stones. But that's going to be the stones no matter what. The land is not. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, I'm really surprised my opponent kept this hand. Just, just does not make sense. Does not make sense to me. They're magical plays. So I can go attack for four again. Play Tarma Wife. So four, he... I attack for four. I guess I just wait. I guess we just shock and I'll just play this time away. If, like there's no reason not to. And then pass. I probably should. I I mistapped there. I should have. I should have left up a land. Should have left up a um, a green land. Have him play around abrupt decay. So if I attack, he takes it. They draw land. This is a four five with lifelink. I can't really race this. Like I kind of can. But not really well, so I might as well wait. Nilo, what's going on? We're gonna be playing. We're gonna be playing your deck after this. We're in match three right now. Game two. I won. I won game one. Suppose got nothing. Gosh. Again, I don't really think I can attack because of this lifelink. What I really wish I had, if I had a Stubborn Denial, I'd race him. But I don't have a Stub. My opponent could have drawn, could have drawn many things to kind of like make my life a little more difficult here. Like if they drove Path, that's pretty bad. They paused. So maybe they're thinking and they're playing around Stub. <clears throat> that's kind of rough. We do have a bunch of good draws here. Kozilek's return would be sweet. I guess we'll fetch here just to take our basic land out of our deck. My opponent's gut path. It's going to be bad no matter what. And I might as well. All right, there's another Tarmogoyf, which doesn't really do anything. So when can I start attacking? What if he plays Daybreak Corner? This is a 6-3. So I probably should actually just shock and pass. Because this this makes it so I play around Daybreak Coronet better. Because if he draws a land, then racing this thing is going to be nearly impossible. I should play this other Tarmor Wife while I've got the mana. I might have messed this game up. Yeah, I think we're just going to wait. I think I messed up. I think I messed up. But I'm in just a tough spot. Like, this unflinching courage is pretty annoying. And we want to play around anything that he could have here that could gain life. And at least if he plays, like, whatever it is on this thing, the, uh, the Daybreak Coronet. Okay, so here comes unflinching courage. I can't imagine what they have. It must be more like rest in peace. Something like that. Alright, so we're still bigger than this. If we draw another Death Shadow, we're in good shape. At least my opponent's down, so it's two turn clock. Ooh, we can we can we can hard cast that bad boy. Three gigs is eight, four, five. Three, yeah, we're 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 going in, and then we are getting our we're getting our hard cast on with the street wraith. These are sad tarmogoyfs. These are these are we we little tarmogoyfs. That's almost as sad as this draw has been. Street wraith, you can't beat it. All right. So we do have to block this thing. And I might as well block it. I might as well just double block it with both my goifs. 
and take five and go to one. I might as well leave. Like, this street rate's got more value than these Tarmogoyves do. Right? So this puts me take five, go to one. And then if I draw Liliana, I guess Liliana, because he just sacks this, then chumps this, takes three. I'd like another Death Shadow. Or Team or Battle Rage. Or another Street Wraith. So this is seven. I can't really afford to attack with this because if he puts anything on this, I die. So I think I just attack with this and then I play another Street Wraith and I pass. I just hope that he doesn't draw anything that gives us like flying or evasion. What a weird game. What a weird game this has been. Cat hard cast two street wraiths. Opponent kept one land and topped a three drop. Okay. Nine five lifelink trample. Kozilek's return would be good. Might as well see what my opponent's top card is going to be. Forest. Okay, so I can't really attack with this because he just chumps. And then I put, yeah, so we just got to pass. What we need is we need another Death Shadow or we need another, um, we need another Death Shadow or we need a Team of Battle Rage. We don't need any more lands. We've drawn an embarrassing amount of lands this game. There's a forest we knew about. Paying costs. My opponent's got more spells. Like, what is this? All right. Full retail. Leyline of Sanctity. I'll just draw Liliana. Okay, we drew Traverse. All right, we're going to play some draw go action here. What a weird game. All right, I mean, that's a redraw. All right, Daybreak Coronet. I think Daybreak Coronet kills me because he just attacks with this. I go block, eat, eat. He gains 12 life. Yep, we dead. What a weird game that was. So let's draw a card. We had Death Shadow on top. The only that would come turn earlier. All right, we're on the play this time, though. Yeah. But, you know, that's magic. I don't think I want to change anything. I think we're just going to keep it as is. And we're going to hope... I mean, it's, it's, it sucks squandering a game like that. <clears throat> I would like to play first. We can't keep this hand. We can't keep this hand. Opponent keeps seven, so we're probably in a little bit of trouble. I don't think we want that. Yeah. Here comes the ley line. I would have had to wait there. I would have I would have had to like look it over again. But there was a chance that like and it's obviously like the Goyfs the game played out, so we want that guy. So the game played out in such a way where like we wanted like having big Tarmogoyce would have been nice. I think with like the information the information we had I feel like it would have almost been better. I don't know. I'd have to go through and look at it. Being results oriented, it would have been nice not having the ley line in play. Or not having the, the rest of beast in play. So I think this is actually going to be a tap land for how sad this is. 
So we're probably going to get Blood Crypt. Oh no, that was the wrong land. Just because we can't get a lot. We can't, well, I guess we couldn't do it with our lands anyways. So there's Overgrown Tomb. So we might as well play this and play Tarmogoyf. So that this land can get us Watery Grave. Then we'll pass, and we won't do this now. I don't. I don't really think of anything my opponent can do can punish me here. But like for having the extra card in my hand, I don't like if I saw a discard spell out of the green white deck, I'd be impressed. <clears throat> this is shaping up to be a difficult game to win, though. And these are the hands that you're not going to win being a Death Shadow player. Like, when, oh, geez, clicked on the wrong button. When when you sit there and your opponent has a ley line hand and their hand is, like, functional, that's when you're in trouble. That appears to be what's happening here. I will, like, I will snap make this trade. Okay. Why do they fetch basic planes? Okay, thought sees it's a dead draw. They have to be pathing me. I guess we'll just go like this. Yeah, I mean, this is unfortunate here. We don't want to see a daybreak coronet. <clears throat> um if I would have drawn a stub there, I would have just thought see. I would have just inquisitioned myself, take the thought seize to have this be four power. But I wouldn't really care if my opponent saw my hand. All right, cartouche. This could work out halfway decent for me. My opponent attacks here. I just push this. It grows my tarmogoyf, and then I actually just eat this. So let's hope that my opponent gets a little greedy here. Right, this grows time going to be a four five. I'd like to go I get priority back here before first strike, right? Yeah. What is this? He's pathing my time away probably. Which that's legit. God, if we had a stub there, it would have been insane. A stub there would have been like game, game ending. So now we have Traverse turned on. We're probably not fetching this. Because it turns, so I shouldn't have played it. Because it makes this a two turn clock. This has been a sad ass draw. If this is how we if this is how we perish here. It cuts off a lot of our draws. Opponent comes in for four. We need a death shadow off the top. Yeah, this has been a this has been a rough draw there, Cody. Death Shadow's big game. God, what salt on the wound that is. Holy shnikes. The rough part was, I don't think we should have lost game two, which, you know, hurts. But we drew the traverse right after the rest in peace. Core Spirit Dancer. All right. So we have a bunch of draw. Kozlex Return, a Death Shadow. If he's got nothing else. Bobble is a redraw at Kozilek's return. Show me a Kozilek's return. <clears throat> nope. They got it. Oh, that was like a depressing set last two games there. Right, let's put this deck up here. 
play my league match. So yeah, you guys, if you guys like what you see, you should hit the follow button. I appreciate all of you guys hanging out. We've got 15 now. I hope you're having a good night. I'm having an awesome night here getting set up for uh, for the stream. So if you guys like what you see, please hit the follow button. If you guys need any magic online things, you can go down. You can click on Card Hoarder. Card Hoarder will hook you up. And if you guys want to watch, if you guys like ever want to like catch the stream that you miss, you want to check out my YouTube page, which is below. So, yeah. Thank you guys very much. And hopefully we don't have the last two matches as sad as that. Holy shnikes. That was sad. <clears throat> we are taking a, it's hard to get paired. See if I missed anybody there. Nope. So how's everybody's night going? How is how is the chat life there? I don't we're paired, sweet. I don't care about chat anymore, I got paired. Just kidding. Maybe to lead off. I don't recognize my opponent's name. Opponent's a decent human being. I'm gonna ship this hand. I don't have any interaction. I just well, if I get to go push Goyf. I usually, I really hate keeping four land hands because if I draw anything after this, is a dud. And if we're playing against a combo deck, then I just, I have, I have really not have any games. All right, this hand is pretty much worse, but we get to manipulate our draw step a little bit. Here, we get a good old scry going on, and we get our most potent threat. Where if we draw a street right for our thought sees, we can play it on two. All right, we'll keep this. Um, Liliana's good. We'll keep Liliana in the dark. We can we can go like this, and we can wait and pass, and we can actually see what our opponent's doing. And if Liliana isn't good, then I can find something new to play. So Underground River, Relic of Progenitus. So we're playing against like a Fairies deck. What is this? It's like a Tezzeret deck. I don't know. I think Liliana's probably gonna be fine. Let me see if I can get a little more information about what they're doing. Yeah, my opponent can eat this. What are they doing? Basic island doesn't really tell me anything. I guess I'll just draw the Liliana. We'll fetch here before we draw. It's marginal, but it could matter. We get Watery Grave. Okay, so at least next turn we're gonna be able to play two Death Shadows. If we draw a way to deal damage to ourselves, we'll be in good shape. It could be Tesserator, which I'm going to struggle against a lot. But the Liliana might do some good work. But if they have like the Whir Witch Bane Orb combo, then I'm going to struggle. <laughs> Especially in a game where we don't have any discard spells and we don't have any. Uh, Counter spells so far, it could be definitely be a hard game to win. I've, I, so I hadn't played against Tez in like, I don't know, years. Budget Lantern, you never know. I haven't played against Tezzerator in like, or the Tezzerator decks in like years. And then I played against one in my last time I streamed. Now playing against this one. All right, so we're. Opponent's going ham. My opponent is like hell bent on this traverse not being good. I guess I'll wait. I don't really know if it matters if we wait, but I should at least like, you know, my opponent might get some information. So this gets overgrown tomb, and this gets blood. This gets blood crypt. So we can just be. A, I have all the black lands here so we can cast our entire deck. Yeah, that's what's going on here. This is some serious graveyard ab abuse. So best draws now are like a discard spell, 
a stubborn denial, a street race wouldn't be bad. Abrupt decay is not bad because I would assume that there's an ensnaring bridge in my future. <clears throat> I would be very surprised if there was not. I guess I was pretty far off from my fairy's estimation. So my opponent's going to... are opting, okay. Why not just sack your relic and keep your card? I find that play to be odd. Cavern of Souls? Eldrazi. Oh man, if I get Wasteland Strangled Dirt here, I'm going to be so mad. <sighs> oh man. Oh, we have a whole new deck in, in going on here now. We'll eat the polluted delta. Alright. I'm gonna edict this. Fetch a stub. Yeah, dude, we suck. We suck. The fact that we didn't peg this deck. I can't believe they sponsored me. I know, I thought there was going to be some cool, cool little pirate thing going on. Wait, did Thought Not Seared? Oh my god. Like, what is, what is life? <clears throat> What is life right now? I guess I'll just decay one of these. Feels kind of bad doing that. But I want to be able to threaten. I could have just. Dis I guess I could have just discarded the Mishra's Bobble. Maybe that would have been better. Probably would have been better. My opponent roots a fatal push here. I'm just going to puke. Wasteland Strangler is not great either. This is OG Eldrazi Winter shit. I think in hindsight, I maybe I should have just ticked up and got rid of this. Hey, Mike, how's it going? All right, I call. That oh, was a fatal push. So we just got blown out. It was all bad. Nothing good came of this turn cycle here. I'm, I'm embarrassed. At least we just draw two cards here. Sweet. All right, let's just take a look here. And then we'll scoop them up. Because I can't, I can't deal with both these creatures next turn. <clears throat> that was just about as bad as it can get. All right, so I think it's blue... I have no idea. I think I don't think I want the red cards. And so I think what we're going to do here is we're going to do the old uh, switcherooskies. This leaves us with not a lot of ways to kill Thought Nuts here, which doesn't feel great. Probably can get rid of an Abrupt Decay. I think we can get rid of like an Inquisition. I think we just want to be a, a little more grindy. I'll keep the K in just in case he has some like some nonsense. We'll keep in another push. I usually don't like counter spells and grindy matchups. They just rot in the hand. Dude, you should have seen my last match. So my last match, I literally beat the pants off of Bogles in game one. And then drew like seven lands in game two. And then just like mulliganed and kind of just dirtled out in game three. It was just some really sad shit. <clears throat> Heater.
situations. Yeah. This deck's ready for a resurgence, all right. That does make sense. I did play against that deck before it was uh, before it was a thing. Okay. So now let's go. You always get Overgrown Tomb with your first land. Let's check out his cop card here. We need to land in a bad way. Delay? Oh, so he counters it, then he processes it. Well, that's cute. All right, we're just going to take all of his cards that enable his game plan. Then we'll take this Dot Knots here. He does have an Eldrazi Temple. All right, so I guess we just take a delay as well. So we take this. So if he delays my Lingering Souls, what does that do? It just, it just exiles it, and then it just gets suspended and casts again. All right. We can just not do that as well. So we'll pass. We'll do this on his turn. Because I assume that he will, like, e easily within his deck's range to draw, like, a Thought Knots here or something that attacks our hand. Wasteland Strangler. Okay. God, what, if I can only get him to process my Lingering Souls, <laughs> like, play in Flashback Souls, then he Wasteland Strangles it, that would be, that would be the bee's knees. Okay, that makes sense. So I just played an underground river. So opponent's playing defense. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to jam this Lingering Souls. My opponent wants to delay this and then put it back in my graveyard with Wasteland Strangler. It's not really that good. The Wasteland Strangler doesn't even do anything because he, if he wants to uh, process, he needs a target. So then I should have led with the Liliana to get the Planeswalker down there. I just have no idea what's going on here. It's probably also okay that I don't know what's going on. <coughs> We know two out of the three cards. All right. Um, so he's got a delay. So I'm definitely just going to flash back this Lingering Souls. Right into this delay. Because if they delay it, then it just comes back. Which is a round. And then we'll just smack in here with two of these. And then we'll double block this. My opponent wants to, whatever, if they want to, like, whatever, push one of these to have this live, that, that, that's, that's within their, you know, that's what they can do if they want. Which appears like what could happen. Yeah, it appears our opponent has played this deck once or twice. All right. Relic, while we don't have Lingering Souls in play, is nice. So they pop the Relic. <clears throat> so this is going to get probably another Overgrown Tomb to play around this Ghost Quarter. I would love to draw... I guess Stubborn Denial doesn't really do anything. That's not bad. So let's go there. He delays it. Then I probably just play Death Shadow, to be honest. What? 
I mean, my opponent gets like an A for effort. You know, I don't even really want to mess with this thing. I don't even think I'm going to play. I think I'm just going to play Death Shadow. If my opponent wants to, like, Venser me, then that's cool. I should definitely have more removal in my deck after sideboard here. <sighs> oh, no, he can cast this king cost two. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. We missed this. This is the first... This is the first, uh... First pun of the night. We missed the old Eldrazi Tempo... Temple Eldrazi cards combo. My opponent's probably like, what an idiot. Alright, so they play the Delta. Alright, so we'll go get our land. It's whatever. We're just going to play this Liliana, bring this Death Shadow back, and like still be in good shape. Oh man, he drew another one? Oh, that's... We might, we might be in trouble now. I guess I should have probably just played. Happens to the best and the worst of us. Yeah, that was not. I'm not. I'm not proud of that moment. <clears throat> so I probably just block. That was a good draw. So probably just block one of these. Take two. Then I have five spirits. Right, I think we just go like this. Take two. Play in Flashback Lingering Souls. Put four in front of here. One in front of here. And then we chump until we find a way out of this. That is definitely not a way out. We're probably going to put like one, oh god, Warping Whale. This is savage. So now I just have to go chump chump and draw another Lingering Souls. Man, my opponent is giving me the business here. I mean, it was all my fault. Like I, I drew, like I ran this Death Shadow right into this Ulamog's Nullifier because like I can't read. Whew. Street Wraith isn't blocked. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So Chump Chump. Yeah, this has been some savage. All right, let's hope our opponent sacks the Thought Knots here, and then we draw, like... A card that's probably not in our deck to be able to handle this situation. <coughs> All right, they didn't do it. Ugh. That was weird. And I, I threw that one. You know, like, we were we were in good shape there. And then it's just like, Eldrazi Temple. Like, <coughs> Eldrazi Temple makes that card just better than a... Better than Street Wraith, I guess. Or better than uh, Spell Queller. Just pure upside. I'm going to grab something to drink. We'll be right back. I mean, I was just being a moron, too. Like, I ran the Death Shadow right into it. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I I was cleared for an emote, actually. 
a while ago. I just don't know how to make them. And I don't know, like, I don't know how to make them. And yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Like, I just don't know how to make them. So. But I should get some emotes. When I first got cleared for my emote, I didn't know if I was going to, like, take it seriously. It's just another goddamn day in paradise, La Flame. So this is, like, a really sketchy hand. Because this hand's, like, really good against half the format. God awful against the other half of the format. But, like, what are you going to do? We'll keep this. It appears to be good against this half of the format. All right, we're going to get that thing out of here. So we're just going to check out their top card, and then we're going to push this. Because we're not going to... We if, if only this was a black land, like the breeding pool, the off... Like the non-black land just sucks. <clears throat> I'll do it one of these points. Yeah, my opponent's just like, that means they've got, you know, gas afterwards. We're going to get Overgrown Tomb. So I think one of my friends is going down the Invitational, and he's going to play Infect this weekend. I'm pretty sure he, he likes it, the positioning. There's not a lot of Fatal Push decks around. God, we are we drawing lands. Does he just run out another Glistener Elf? Or is he watching him play, like, oh, play No Wire all right, we're going to let Noble Hierarch go for a little while. That means their entire hand is played. I'm surprised they didn't... I'm surprised they didn't go the other way. Okay, so there's the elf. So they've got vines with just hexproof mode. I need one more piece of interaction. If I draw like a fatal push here, I'll be in good shape. I think we're going to shock on this one. That's probably the last shocking we're going to do. All right, that's not bad. Like at least that's a big death shadow. That's going to be able to favorably interact in combat with this no matter what. Because like I'll just block. And then if they go for anything, then I'll just grow the death shadow by like dismembering something. Um, I, so there's like Eldrazi Tron, which is a Chalice deck, and then there's a bunch of random other Chalice decks. Like, there's like the Mono Red decks. Like, there's only one real Chalice deck. So again, I'm going to block here, and I'm going to dismember this. Get this Noble Hierarch, make him use at least a Pump Spell, and if he kills this, it turns on Delirium. If we are respecting it's a decent amount of chance. I guess I'm confused what you're talking about. Oh, there's my bot that's so he just gives this can't be the target of spells or abilities. Alright. You got it, dude. I don't think that's how that was supposed to go down. Okay, so five. Unfortunately, we're one point away from killing our opponent. We'll get this blighted agent out of there. Oh, shit. Whatever. I should have played that untapped traverse for another Death Shadow, but it doesn't matter because 
Next turn, I'll just fetch, or I'll just or team or battle rage and kill him. Actually, that might not get it, because he could ask the target creature can't be the target of abilities your opponent's control this turn. Okay, so now we're good. We thought sees. Take our opponent's vines. That would just be like not thinking, moving too fast with that. So he definitely should vine to my death shadow here. Okay. So we'll take vines. I can't do one more damage to myself, unfortunately. So now I don't really see how my opponent gets out of this one. Because even if they play a creature, they have to be able to pump it up. They play a creature, 18. They need to be able to put at least 13 power in front of this Death Shadow. That is not going to do it. This Blossoming Defense doesn't get me, right? Oh, he doesn't even, can't even cast it. All right. Coming in. So this is one of the odd matchups where I actually break my rule when playing this five-color deck. And I have uh, I have all five colors in my deck. Because I want this, I want this, and I want these. Like the Kozlex Return plus Lingering Souls is a Nambo, but it like each one of them is just going to be so good that if either of them lives, it doesn't matter. I don't need rages. I want like some number of stubborn denials, but not all of them. I can cut some discard because we're bringing in collective brutalities. I'm not wild about abrupt decay because all of his removal spells are, um, all of his removal spells are like protection or his counter spells are protection based. So the abrupt decay like not being counterable is just like kind of inefficient. Then we can probably ditch a lingering souls. We don't need all of them. More or ditch like a stub. Bring another one of discard spell in. Especially when we're on the, I guess when we're on the draw, we'll look to cut a couple less counter spells. Maybe we'll go like one here, two here. Then you bring this land in. We'll just cut the overgrown tomb, and that's how we'll do it. <coughs> So 17 viewers, guys. Again, thanks for showing up. After this match, we're going to switch to Eldrazi and Taxes. we got to ship this hand. We have no, Even though this is like one of our best cards in this matchup, we don't have any form of interaction. We don't have green, but this hand's pretty good besides that. We have green. <coughs> All right, Ink Moth. We'll look at our top card here. We're going to cast Inquisition regardless. We do want that. So we'll check out what our opponent's doing here. We'll take his protection spell. Then we will pass. This Stubborn Denial is going to be really good this game because our opponent's going to be taxing their mana a lot in order... Oh, they didn't even... They have six through the thing. They're going to be taxing their mana quite a bit in order to use this Ink Moth. So it's just going to tie them up. And we're going to get Delirium after this turn. So I don't even know. I guess there's no way, because I don't play the Stomping Ground. There's no way to cast. Yeah. So plays another Botanical Sanctum. So we got Dismember, Pendlehaven, Might of Alcaroza. The thing is, I don't really want to cast Souls right now because of this Pendlehaven. This Pendlehaven is going to be pretty annoying. I think I would rather... Let's check out my top card. If I don't want it, I might cast Lingering Souls. If I do want it, then we'll see. Death Shadow. So we do want it. So we're not going to cast Lingering Souls. <clears throat> 
There's our threat. And then if we can just get a chance to like use this, there's the Pendle Haven. Noble Hierarch, okay. So I'm tempted to just kill this Noble Hierarch because no matter what, like, target, because no matter what, this is going to be really difficult to deal with because if you know, if I have this Noble Hierarch in play and I have Lingering Souls plus Pendle Haven, my opponent's just going to like be able to outgrind my souls tokens. And I think I have to turn Delirium on to hopefully be able to set up like an Is It Static Caster. And this is also going to let me get my Death Shadow into play. In the, not, if not next turn, then soon after. Well, doesn't that just do it up right there? So I think we're going to get Godless Shrine here. And I'm just going to, like, brutality my opponent. <clears throat> Probably look to take, like, a pump spell. So they have ground. Which one's landfall? Okay, so we'll take this one. And then we'll just wait again. And then next turn, if I would love to draw land, because if I draw land, I can then like unlock my hand a little bit, be able to use this traverse. But like now, my opponent's not even going to attack, okay? My opponent's playing very patiently. I really don't want to play this Death Shadow until I can protect it. So I think we're just... Well, no, nah, I'm going to cast Lingering Souls. Because at least it gives me something if my opponent like gets the pressure here. Like decides that it's time to go for it. And this makes them tap like three mana a turn. And they might just dismember one of these just to use their mana. <clears throat> which, is, which would be pretty weak. But I could see it happen in here. So, like, they animate, they attack, we just block, yep. Buys us a bunch of time. I want to fetch land. Fetch land, I can go Death Shadow and Tarmogoyf and have Stubborn Denial up. Wow, they dismembered this, okay. That, that makes me think they drew another dismember. Or this is a spell pierce. Again, I think I'm just going to play it slow because we can get away with it. And I think this is, I guess it's not a spell pierce, okay. <clears throat> I think we're going to be okay. We just need another land. And then if we find that land... I might just get a red source, see if I can like snipe this ink moth nexus so my opponent gets like too cute with it. <clears throat> okay, blighted agent. We just need a land now. A land, and we are in good shape. Probably shouldn't have blocked there, to tell you the truth. I should have just waited. Wasn't thinking about it. Should have just taken two. Plays another Pendle Haven. Okay, so they do that to just play around like... God. I think we, now we got to play this Death Shadow out here. Now we'll pass. My opponent's got Groundswell and X. I bet they have another Pendlehaven in their hand, because like 
I guess they, they wouldn't play more than two of these. If we can just find a land, then this Staticaster is going to be unreal. I guess I did this to myself. I don't know what I fetched for with this <clears throat> Godless Shrine, so I can play in Flashback Lingering Souls. Which has been good. Like, it was worth doing that for sure. But it is a bit... It is a bit un unfortunate how this all ended up here. My opponent going to go in here? I mean, if they've got, like, a four-power thing... All right, they have another Death Shadow. Or another Dismember. All right. That's unfortunate, but we kind of we pegged it. God, just tap. Come on. All right. Well, at least that's going to, like, give us some form of protection. Double groundswell. We're definitely going to need to land quickly. Or we are in a lot of trouble. This stub looks great. We got it, man. So this is actually lethal next turn. Unless my opponent drew a pump spell this turn. All right. I should probably I should probably do this on my turn. Okay, that's that's a relief. So now we'll just have to wait around with this thing here. So it's going to do one to activate. Okay, so they have plenty of mana. We have to block or we're dead. Okay, Glistener Elf. Last card's Groundswell. Right, because this is two. My opponent played a land, right? They played Forest. Yep, so we got a block. <coughs> So I need another Lingering Souls or a Red Land. All right, that'll do. Just hope they don't find a way to make this thing unblockable. Guys, this is my five color Esper deck. <clears throat> this is interesting because this buys me three turns because they can't attack with both because they're going to be just throwing away <clears throat> pump spells. In order to like keep their creature alive. Like they're trading pump spells for one half of lingering souls. Alright. So I guess now we just go escalate with two modes. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. And then target opponent reveals his or her hand. Because this doesn't, this means that they have to use this or they have a pump. Like, there's no way we die next turn. Yeah, and then we'll go here, here. And then we'll just ditch a Tarmog Wave. We're only going to need one threat to win this game. What an odd game. Okay, so the groundswell. We knew that was going to happen. Okay. So is there any one draw that kills me? I guess a plus four kills me. <clears throat> might, might kills me. Groundswell kills me because they have a land. Vines of the Vassal kills me. A lot of draws that kill me.
So again, I'll make a move on this bl on this uh, blighted this glistener elf because if somehow this this thing dies, I'd rather have the one that takes mana to activate live. Just need to fetch land. Just need to fetch land. I will flash these back. I guess I should turn off, and I should just thought seize them just in case. There's no reason not to, I guess. It could be like we could get like a blossoming defense. Maybe I should. I I, I miss sequence this because I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah, he's just gonna like use this now. Yeah. All right. All right, we need a fetch land here. We've only seen one fetch land in our top 20 or so cards. We're just going to block with one. Actually, I think we're going to just... I guess we're just going to block. This is different than his last attack, though. Because if he'd have drawn a plus four, plus four, he would just attack with both. Oh. All right, we're, gonna let, we're just going to let this happen here. Yeah, so you'd have to draw it this turn. God. I should I still should just cast this thought seize. I, mean, I should have done it before combat, but I'm just like a little I'm a little frustrated. Yeah, I'm a little frustrated that we haven't hit a fetch land. Cause like if we hit a fetch if we had a fetch land, we'd be in, we'd be off to the races here. And I guess this is like, I, I decided to go for the Lingering Souls over the Tarmogoyf. <clears throat> but what a weird game. We'll pass through this. The stubborn denial hasn't done anything because we couldn't get a threat in play. God. And we'll just chump this. Makes ink moth. We're probably dead here because like any spell kills us. Lock this guy. Oh, we didn't block any of them. Oh. Moto. Oh, wow, he didn't kill me. I just motoed and then he motoed. All right. So now we're in all right shape. Now we go get the... We probably, unfortunately, we have to get, we still go get our fetch land. Probably easily could have gotten, like, to play, I guess I can go get to play Tarmogoyf because it would have left me, like, too slow to this Ink Moth Nexus. So I'm going to put this in front of the Ink Moth Nexus and this here and see what my opponent does. Oh no, we're not going to do that because this thing, this thing does everything but fly. Reset blockers. We'll go here. 
We'll go here. This has been like a weird game. If this doesn't work out, we're like dead. Unless we, we have another Lingering Souls in our deck. No, we went through both of them. Okay, so we got Hexproof. And then he was going to pump this. Pumps has become immense. Okay, so now it's Kozilek's Return or Bust. All right, we're starting to keep playing. Hopefully our opponent just gets like crazy and animates a Zink Moth. <clears throat> oh no, we're still dead because no matter what, because of this Pendlehaven. Might as well not even show it to him. He might go to like Pendlehaven. Yeah. Because no matter what, he pumps this one. Yeah, so let's get back. Now, let's play like a normal game. That was one of the weirder games of Magic I've ever played. So the stubs were not good. And I think part of that was because we just did not ever do a threat and our, or establish a threat. And our deck's not good if we don't have a threat. So <clears throat> I don't really think I want to change anything. Lingering Souls can be a little clunky. Maybe I want to discard, like take out one discard spell and then bring in one more Souls one to play. Then we'll have to put them away here so that we can hopefully play some... Uh, play some E and T after this. Yeah, this hand's alright. We'll keep this. Play this first. Well, it looks like we're actually going to have a threat. We have a sideboard card in our hand. So we get blood... We actually don't have blood cards. Overgrown Tomb, Godless Shrine. Oh, Overgrown Tomb, Godless Shrine. Do we? No way. No, we have all of them in our hand. We have all of them in our deck still. Thank the Lord. I remember I boarded out a land. I just want to make sure I boarded out the right land. So I think I'm just going to push this right now. I'm going to save this Kozilek's return for the end of the game. I'd like this to act as like the nail in the coffin, sort of. And this gets Godless Shrine. We have all five of our lands. That's a good draw. So now we got our little homeboy beater here. The man, the myth, the legend, the Tarmogoyf. My opponent plays a Blighted Agent's Noble Hierarch. All right. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to attack. Get in there for some damage. Then go get Godless Shrine and cast it. Godless Shrine and cast Death Shadow. Sorry about that. I'm speaking gibberish. I'm pretty excited to play Eldrazi and Taxes. That's, that's the next deck in line there. Maybe my opponent will decide to like come at me with this noble hierarch. Oh god, if I, I gotta hit a fetch land, just give me a fetch land or a street wraith. So this is like too good not to take. Even though I've gotta lose my death shadow. My opponent's only got three cards in their hand. So I should just attack with... Yeah, we're just going to attack with everything. This does feel bad, losing Death Shadow, but it's going to add one more creature type to my graveyard for Delirium. It's going to turn... It doesn't turn on... Uh, whatever it is. It doesn't turn on... Um... Traverse yet, but we're getting there. So the only way we get blown out here is my opponent's got like double 
mutagenic growth on the blighted agent. And then they're like, like, because we can deal with the first one. <clears throat> Maybe I shouldn't have played the Death Shadow last turn, but... Okay. Okay. Shuts off the back half of Lingering Souls. Oh, wow. Um, I guess we're just going to play that. Minus it, get back Death Shadow, play Death Shadow, because we're not going to play it, we're going to hold up Stubborn Denial, excuse me, that was the, that was the original plan, and then we'll wait here, I'm excited to play Eldrazi and Taxes next, oh, let's flood out a little bit. So there's a lot of draws next turn that I think kill my opponent. So we can go like minus here to put four. If we hit delirium, we're going to kill our opponent. So it's definitely worth going for the delirium here. Dismember this. Five. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to go for it. If we hit a sorcery, we kill our opponent. That's a creature, so we might as well just... Bring this back. And that kills our opponent on the board. We will instigate the action here. They, they, they need two. They can't even cast two dismembers. If two dismembers kills them. We just go stub stub. All right. Let's open up our chest. And then we're going to play some Eldrazi and Taxes here. So let's go up here. Okay, let's update this. Let's go to the products here. And open up this one chest. A hive. So we got nothing. All right, let's get back into the league. Let's jump back in quick with Eldrazi and Taxes. Then I'll just shut off my recorder, then turn it back on for a second. <clears throat> 